What is up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Kowalski Fishing. In today's episode of Bass Fishing 101, I am going to be going over the basics of what you need to get started. So first, you're new to bass fishing and you need to figure out how to get the edge on your friends because you know, you want to be the best. The first thing you need to do is scroll on down and hit that subscribe button and smash that like button and you're going to be on your way to being a professional. So the first thing we're going to be going over is rods. What type of rod should you get? You don't need a fancy bait caster that costs $200 and a whole carton of lures to get started. What you need is an inexpensive spinning combo and a pack of worms and you'll be on your way to being a professional. But okay, so you need a spinning you need a spinning combo. What combo should you get? You got really two choices for uh, inexpensive um, and what availability you're gonna have at your local store at like Walmart. You know what is Walmart gonna have? If you have a Cabela's near you, great. But if not, uh, these are what Walmart's gonna have. Um, first up is an ugly stick, a GX2. Um, this guy costs like 50 bucks for a combo and it's a pretty good rod. Um, not a huge fan of the reel, but the rod is going to do you good. If you get this rod, it might be a good idea to put a $30 reel on. I like Mitchell. Um, right here you see this is a Mitchell rod. Um, this thing is a uh, Mitchell reel, I'm sorry. It's a Mitchell Avocet. This one's the 2500 series. and. Um, it's a pretty good reel. I like it. I put it on uh, all my uh, ugly sticks. I got a couple different sizes. If you got a little bit more money to spend, if you got a little more than $50 and you want to spend a little bit more money on a nicer rod, you want to go with the Luz, the Luz Speed Stick. I know you're probably thinking, um, all these guys use uh, medium heavy bait casters, so I need to get a medium heavy spinning rod. No, don't, don't do it. You want a medium. And the reason isn't because the rod is too stiff for you to do your job. The problem is the handle. Uh, this is a medium rod and it's got a nice small handle. The medium heavy uh, ugly stick has this massive handle, guys. And when you try to cast it, uh, most majority of the time when you try to flick it, you're going to hit yourself in the back, hit yourself in the butt, and you're going to get stuck in a tree and you're going to have a bad time. And fishing is all about having a good time. You want to go with a medium. This dude cost the loose speed stick cost about 60 bucks. Uh, comes in mediums, the perfect size. Uh, I believe this guy is a, this is a 6.6. This is my go-to spinning rod, the speed stick. It's a 6.6 medium. Uh, I like it a lot, but my favorite spinning rod, guys, is this Shimano right here. It's a six foot. Um, and you're wondering what size, what length should you get? And it all depends on what you're doing. Um, I take this guy with me when I go do a lot of pond fishing and I'm stuck between like two trees and I can't really get a good cast. I can't really unload from my sides. I got no rooms on my sides. And with this shorter six foot rod, you can grab the lure and you can pitch it. You can pitch it underneath you. Uh, here, I'll, sh I'll show you. With this shorter um, six foot rod, You'll be able to pitch it in front of you, so you never have to. You don't have to cast from your outsides where there's trees and stuff in your way. The shorter rod, you can cast directly in front of you, and you know hold the lure in your hand. You can pitch it forward and make nice casts. So if you already got a boat and you're getting started and you're fishing off a boat, you're gonna want to go with a longer rod. Um, you'll be able to cast farther and you'll have more power of setting the hook than a shorter rod. But the shorter rod is going to be your go-to if you do a lot of pond fishing. So it basically comes down to what you need, guys. Um, if you pond fish, get the shorter rod. If you fish off a boat or in big open, you got a lot of open where you go fishing, then you can go with the longer rod. Um, it's really up to you. So the next thing we're going to be going over is fishing line. What fishing line do you need? You can either load up a fluorocarbon or you can load up a braid. Um, there's also monofilament but I recommend either stay with fluorocarbon or braid. Monofilament floats. It used to be the standard back in the day when fluorocarbon was really expensive, but now that fluorocarbon is really cheap, they're around the same price as monofilament. 
fluorocarbon is going to be your way to go because the line sinks. Um, you don't really need your line to float unless you're fishing top water, but then at the same time, braid floats and um, it'll also sink. So your choice is between fluorocarbon and braid. And um, so if you want to spool up with fluorocarbon, the highest you can go is about eight pounds. If you go any higher than eight pounds of fluorocarbon, the line when you cast, it's going to bird's nest off and give you a lot of problems. So I pretty much just stopped using fluorocarbon on my spinning reels. I pretty much just use braid. Braid's, uh, braid's what I like. Um, the highest braid you really want to go would be 15 pounds, anywhere between 10 and 15 pounds. The braid, it's going to come off really nicely. It's not going to, it's not going to, um, backlash on you. Um, fluorocarbon is a good way to go. If you're fishing with live bait off a boat, um, you're definitely going to want fluorocarbon. It's going to be the way to go. But if you do a lot of pond fishing, a lot of bank fishing, you're going to want to go with the braid. So basically I'm going to be showing you guys how to rig up two different rigs. Um, both are going to be using the same hook. Um, these are going to be like the easiest. These are my two favorite ways to fish on a spinning reel. I keep, I keep these rigs tied on year round. I don't take them off. This is all I use my spinning reel. You're going to want to get these round bend hooks. I believe this is like a three yacht, three yacht round bend hook. And those two rigs I'm going to be showing you guys today is the drop shot rig and the wacky rig. My two favorite rigs to throw on my spinning reel. These two rigs guys always catch fish. Uh, my current PB it's like is a seven and a half pound bass. I caught it with the drop shot rig on my spinning reel. Um, I got $200 bait casters, you know, I got all the fancy lures and uh, my PB I caught with a spinning reel and this little hook right here guys on a drop shot rig. The first knot I'm going to be going over is the polymer knot. The polymer knot is the, is the mandatory knot you have to use for braid. Um, for uh, fluorocarbon you can use the basic improved clinch knot to tie on your hooks, but for braid you have to use the polymer knot. So here is how you tie the palm or not. This is your braid. This is your braid. This is your hook. Imagine that's your eyelet. All right. You're going to want to double the braid up. Um, you're going to want to leave about a foot, probably about a foot on the double up. You're going to want to run the double up through the eyelet, pull it tight, and you want to make a loop around a single double knot. You gotta see, you just do a little double knot, but you gotta leave this loop right here big enough to where your hook can go through it. So for this wrench, I'm gonna have to make it a little bigger to make that double a lot bigger. We're gonna do our double knot, cinch it down, go ahead and cinch it down to the eyelet, and then grab your loop and run it over your lure. All right, yeah, did you guys see that? You're going to want to take your loop and run it. You run your uh, your hook through the loop. Pull the loop up and then you're going to want to cinch that line down. Just pull from your main end, not your tag end, your main end and cinch it down. And that is the polymer knot, guys. If you tie a improved clinch knot on your braid, the um, the line when a fish bites and it pulls, your line's literally just gonna pull out with your braid. The braid is slick and it's just it's just gonna pull out, you're gonna lose your lure, you're gonna lose the fish, you're gonna have a bad time. So you have to use the polymer knot for braid. So the second knot I'm gonna be going over is the improved clinch knot. This is gonna be your go-to fluorocarbon knot for all your rods, your bait casts, your spinning reels. For every fluorocarbon situation, this is probably gonna wanna be your your uh, your way to go. So for your for your improved clinch knot, you just run it through the eyelet, single loop, pull the line up. You're gonna wanna spin, you want, from the hook, spin about six to eight times. And you're gonna grab the tag end and you're gonna wanna run it through the, the loop in the beginning. In the front of all your spins, you want to run that line through there. And now that you have the line through there, you see um, you got your you got the loops from where you spun it. You ran the tag end through the first loop. Now you're going to want to run it through this big hole. You're going to want to fold it over 
and pull it through that hole and cinch it down. And that right there is your improved clinch nut. And remember guys, before you cinch it all the way down, always wet, always wet the knot with your saliva or pond water, whatever you wanna do. Just wet your knot before you cinch it down. It's gonna be that much stronger. So the first rig I'm gonna be going over is the wacky rig. The wacky rig is great for pitching banks and fishing shallow ponds. This is the wacky rig. You take your little round bend hook and you run it through the top of the worm. And um, you get this sexy little, little dangle, little dangle action. And a weightless works really well. I love throwing it weightless. You can also put a weight in one end of the, the worm. You can put a weight in there and it'll, it'll bounce off the bottom uh, standing up and that'll get you some more baits too if they're not biting on top of the water. Lure is an absolute destroyer. The second lure I'm going to be going over is the drop shot rig. This rig is the uh, this rig is great for fishing a little deeper water than the wacky rig. Um, you're fishing out in the middle of the pond or a little deeper areas. You're fishing out in the lake. This is going to be your go-to rig um, for fishing deeper water. Um, basically, the drop shot rig is pretty much the same as the wacky rig. You get your braid and your round bend hook, but you also have this weight hanging down from the bottom of the lure. So your, your lure is sitting up about six to eight inches from the weight. So the weight is gonna be bouncing on the bottom while your bait is gonna be dangling up here about six to eight inches. This is, um, this is the rig I caught my PB with um, this past year. Caught a seven and a half pounder with the drop shot rig. I had, um, I had this little goby tied on this is the color changing goby uh, by, uh, by Smartbaits, yeah. This is the color changing uh, goby by Smartbaits. Basically the only difference between this and the wacky rig is, is you're going to want to leave your tag end when you're tying your polymer knot onto the hook. You're going to want to leave your tag end a lot bigger and you're going to want to, after you cinch that knot down, you're going to want to run that tag end back through the eyelet. and back down and then you tie your weight on at the bottom. I'll show you how to do that right now, guys. All right, guys, so when you're tying on your polymer knot for the, um, for the drop shot rig, when you do your double up, leave a lot, leave a lot on your tag end. Have like maybe two feet, have like two feet on your tag end for your double up. And you run that hook through there onto that double up, just like that. Pull it up, um, tie your um, tie your single knot, cinch it down, pull that hook through the loop. If I can get it, yep. Pull that pull that hook through that loop, guys, just like that, and cinch it down from the main end. And now you'll have your tag end still hanging. And you're gonna wanna run your tag end, you're gonna wanna run your tag end back through the eyelet. Just like that. And cinch it on through. When you pull from both ends, you want the hook to be standing. If you put it through the bottom and said the top when you ran it through the eyelet, it, the hook's going to be upside down and you're going to want to pull it back through and fix that. And now that you have your hook there, you got your tag in, now you can tie on your drop shot weight onto the back of this tag. Alright guys, so here's your, um, here's your drop shot weight. It's just a little, little egg weight and they got these nice little, little split rings on top. Um, you, got your, you got your hook on your line already, grab your tag end, and you're gonna want a polymer knot through the, the drop shot weight again. So once again, do your polymer knot, double it up, run it through the, run it through the eyelet, tie your, tie your single knot, run the weight, run the weight through the loop, and cinch it down. You um, you don't need these uh, fancy little 
gobies or lizards. These are my favorite to throw on a drop shot rig, just these little creatures. These little creature bait, this is like a little lizard guy. Um, this is a goby. But you can fish your, your worms on here just the same. You can wacky rig them on there, just like you did the wacky rig. Thanks for tuning in guys. Um, appreciate you guys coming in, checking out the video. Um, if you like today's video, scroll on down there, hit that subscribe button for me, smash that like button, uh, share the video with your friends. Uh, but most importantly, go catch some fish. Go use these tips and tricks you learned from today to go catch some monster bass. Thanks for tuning in guys, peace.